Welcome back, everybody. It is episode number two of Inscribe Sports here on WSRU TV. We have a lot of good topics to cover in this episode. And with that being said, let's get into our first segment of the episode. In our first segment of episode two, I will talk about a few slippery rock sports like I did in last week's episode. So let's get into it. In a hard-fought match, the Slippery Rock football team showcased resilience and determination against the California University Vulcans. Despite strong plays and a competitive spirit through the, throughout the game, Slippery Rock ultimately fell short, unable to overcome the Vulcans' scoring drives and defensive efforts. The team demonstrated grit and skill by leaving everything on the field, but the Vulcans emerged victorious in the end. The Rock moves to rank number 16 in the D2 Top 25 after previously sitting at the number 7 spot. We will make sure to cover SRU's game against the Clarion Golden Eagles on Halloween in a PSAC showdown in episode four because SRU is on a bye this week. On the topic of rock football, star quarterback Brayden Long was just named a national finalist for the 2024 William V. Campbell Trophy. Long has been named one of the 16 finalists from all of college football and, only D2, and the only D2 finalist for the nation's premier school athlete award. Some names? like NFL Hall of Famer Peyton Manning, Justin Herbert of the Los Angeles Chargers, and star college QB of the Florida Gators, Tim Tebow, who eventually played in the NFL previously, won this award. The award annually recognizes an individual as the best in the nation for his combined academic success, football performance, and exemplary leadership. Great job to Braden Long for becoming the third Slippery Rock player to be named a finalist for this prestigious award. Slippery Rock men's soccer is coming back with yet another win. The Rock traveled and defeated Seton Hill University with a score of 4-3 back on October 19th. Big shout out to Ignacio Roland for the hat trick assist to help gain a win for this game. Altor Horde scored two goals, Will Harrington with one, and Arturo Pla Hernandez with one as well. Adam Davies made five spectacular saves facing 14 shots on net. Great game, guys. The Rock travels to Gannon on the day of this recording, we will get back to you next episode with the results. In a tightly contested match, the Slippery Rock women's soccer team played a 0-0 draw against Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Both teams showcased strong defensive strategies, but neither could find the back of the net. Leah Allman gave a standout performance and goal for Slippery Rock, making four crucial saves to keep the match scoreless. The team's resilience and Allman's efforts were yet were key to securing the tie. Their next game is on October 26th at Clarion, at noon. Make sure you keep an eye out for that one and we'll be back right after this. As years pass and people come and go from our lives, all we have is our memories. From the family gathering, to the summer baseball games, to that first trip to Disney, those memories are something to be cherished. I thought many of those memories were lost to time and outdated technology, but with Memory Lane Media, they gave me those memories back so that I can share them with my grandkids and they can share them with their kids one day. Welcome back everyone to Inscribe Sports on WSRU-TV. In this segment, Joe and I will be recapping Week 8 in the college football world. That's exactly right. We will also be talking about the Heisman Trophy race as well. So let's get right into it. Week 8 of college football delivered plenty of excitement as the November 5th release of the first college football ranking is rapidly approaching. The marquee matchup of the week featured Kirby Smart's Georgia Bulldogs traveling to Austin, Texas to take on the number one ranked Texas Longhorns. The Longhorns attempted to utilize both premier quarterbacks, Quinn Ewers and Arch Banning, but it was not enough to overcome a scoreless first half. The Longhorns received their first loss as a member of the SEC and will look to rebound against a red-hot, nationally ranked Vanderbilt squad. In another SEC showdown this week, Tennessee brought down Alabama for the second time in three seasons. 17-year-old Ryan Williams continued his electric freshman season as he tallied 73 receiving yards and a touchdown, but a late interception thrown by the Tide quarterback Jalen Melrose sealed the game for the Volunteers. BYU and Iowa State remain unbeaten as they both narrowly escaped upsets against Oklahoma State and UCF, respectively. Defending national champion Michigan continued to struggle under first-year head coach Sharon Moore as they dropped to 4-3 after a loss to rival Illinois. Oregon won in dominant fashion, 
securing the duck spot as the new number one in the country. Georgia, Penn State, Ohio State, and Texas round out the new top five. As the expanded college football playoff field begins to shape, that also means the Heisman race is heating up as well. Boise State Ashton Gentry is currently the favorite as he is or has racked up a staggering 1,248 rushing yards and 17 touchdowns for the 17th ranked Broncos. Gentry has the most dominant or is the most dominant player in college football as of now and if he wills the Broncos to the playoffs it is hard to imagine that he will not win the Heisman. Also Colorado two-way star Travis Hunter is certainly in the hunt for this prestigious award. Hunter has accumulated 604 receiving yards and six touchdowns when he plays on the offensive side of the ball. Also, to go with his defensive side of the ball, he has 19 tackles with two interceptions as well as a defensive back. Others in the mix are quarterbacks Cam Ward of Miami, Drew Aller of Penn State, and Dylan Gabriel of Oregon. If Week 8 is any sort of indication of how the rest of the season will play out, the Heisman race in the fight for one of the ex exclusive 12 playoff spots will be must-watch TV. This is all we have for this segment. We'll be right back after this. Main Street's more of a budget-friendly option. You've got the smaller apartments that definitely leave a lot more room for customization. They are also fully furnished. It's kind of our hidden gem. So you have your options of three people units or two people units. South Rock's more of our in-between property. It's not super fancy, but it's also still very budget-friendly. You have the opportunity to live with three other individuals, which definitely helps with the pricing. The units come fully furnished. The bedrooms come with a desk, a dresser, a nightstand, and a full size bed. Kitchens are fully equipped. You have a washer and dryer in the apartment and then you have a really nice patio. Stonecrest is quiet, comfortable, classy. We offer four bedrooms and we have two bedrooms. All of our units are completely furnished. The kitchen is fully equipped. You have fridge, stove, microwave, dishwasher and garbage disposal and you do have a patio space as well. For more information, visit us at www.southrockapartments.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Welcome back, everyone. We've got recaps of the ALCS and NLCS. But first, we're going to talk about the Yankees beating the Guardians in five games. And John Collarstone was the ALCS MVP. And personally, I'll ask your opinion next, but personally, I think that's wrong. Stan went four for 18. He did have four home runs, so all four hits were home runs. Um, he had seven RBIs, which, which is a 222 batting average of 333 on base. And this is the part that won it for him is a 122 OPS plus, I mean, OPS. And now let me compare Soto's stats. Soto went seven for 19, three home runs, six RBIs, four walks, one intentional walk, which is a 368 batting average of 478 on base, 895 slugging, and a 1373 OPS. Now I think Stanton did have big home runs here, but personally, Soto obviously has a better styling. This is the most valuable player. Yeah. This isn't this. I don't know what they're saying here. Hunter, how do you feel? I mean, yeah, I do agree. Soto, or yeah, Soto had the all-around better performances coming up clutch. But uh, the only thing that I can see is yeah, the Stanton big home runs and big games. I mean, I mean, the Soto basically won the series yeah. for them in that last game. I don't understand. Yeah, Any. I do agree with that. I do think Soto deserved it more over Stanton. And in the NLCS, the Dodgers took down the Mets in six games. None of the games were close at all. The closest game was 7-3, to right? Uh, your NLCS MVP is Tommy Edmond, who is very deserving of it. Came out of nowhere, really. Yeah. He hit 407 with a 630 mm. slugging and a 1023 OPS. I got no complaints here. Nope. I got no complaints here. No either. complaints here. Now we're going to talk about the big series, the World Series. We've got... Yankees Dodgers starting in LA we've got Otani Judge Soto Mookie and we'll see if Freddie Freeman plays we don't know if he's gonna play yeah. so Hunter we'll start with your predictions all right I'm I'm gonna go with the Dodgers I wrong mean, tell me why you're wrong tell me why good no you go then the Dodgers are starting Jack Flaherty game one okay his ERA is seven and okay, then they got game two Yamamoto a 5'11 <laughs> ERA I mean I just think they're gonna play better I just think they're gonna pitch better against the against the Yankees. I don't see them scoring as much. The Dodgers are not the Royals or they're not the Guardians. They played the the Dodgers played the Mets. The Mets and Grimace. And what do they do? They beat your team. Oh okay. tell me about it. Okay, Let's here go. we go. Yeah. The Phillies were crashing and burning. Okay. It didn't matter anyways. But still, what happened though? <sighs> okay, yeah, they lost. But listen, yeah. listen, 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 listen. None of the games were close. The Dodgers 
who's in the next series and who wasn't. Okay, fine. Look, who do you think is going to be World <laughs> Series MVP then? Uh, I'm going with Mookie Betts. That's I, safe pick. I think he's already he's already having a great postseason, and I think he's going to come up even more in the World Series and give them the title. Okay. What about you? I have the Yankees in six games. <laughs> Let me tell you why. And they've got a better bullpen. They've got Luke Weaver, Tim Mazza. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Clay Holmes. Oh. <laughs> and you're you, telling what, me. You can tell me what you want to say about Clay Holmes. All right, you're telling me Pirates legend Clay Holmes in the big 2024. You think he's going to do that in the World Series? Yes. Against who? He made one mistake. He made one, one mistake. mistake. Watch, him, watch him throw that changeup right. against Otani. And, and I'm going to see, see Otani send it. Over the freaking no, he's gonna set it out. No, that's All not right. gonna happen. I mean, that's whatever. No. I think that's whatever. Yankees have a better lineup, yeah, a more consistent lineup. Okay. Yeah, sure. Besides one player in Jazz Chisholm, I think I have faith in every hitter, and maybe Austin Wells. Maybe Austin Wells isn't that great. Oh, if Freddie Freeman is not opinion. playing, if Freddie Freeman is not playing, yeah, the Dodgers have a worse lineup. It's pretty even right now. I'll say that. That's whatever you say. Okay. That's whatever you say. Okay. In my World World Series MVP, I've got Anthony Volpe. <laughs> now let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. He's got a great postseason in the in the NLDS. He was all right, a 600 OPS, not great, not great, not great. In the ALCS, he hit 353, mm. a 476 on base, and an 888 OPS. Okay. The only reason his OPS isn't that high is because he didn't hit home runs. He's only got one extra base hit so far. But I think being in LA. And also being in a short porch, <laughs> short porch New York, he's gonna win the World Series MVP. I don't know his odds right now, but I'll tell you right now, I've got Anthony Volpe as my World Series MVP and right. Yankees in six. I am so confident in the Yankees winning the World Series. I'll make a bet with you. So what is it? No, if the Yankees it? lose the World Series in okay. any amount of games, they could get swept. It doesn't matter. Yeah. If the Yankees lose this World Series, you get to pie me in the face and drop ice water on my head. <laughs> Deal. Now, we're going to go to Joey and Quinn for their World Series picks. I believe Joey and I are in a bit more of agreement than our co-hosts about the World Series. Is oh, that right? Yeah, I would say so. And we're definitely not placing any bets. Yeah, there will be no bets. Uh, if they want to pie each other, that's fine with us. But we're, we're going to be strictly baseball. I believe we both have the Dodgers in six. I completely agree with that. I'm not a Yankees guy. I don't want to see them get their whatever it is, 28 rings. Uh, just yeah, I agree. Maybe it's wishful thinking and... Uh, the Yankees did some heartbreaking things to the Guardians, but I'm hoping the Dodgers can can come through with this one. I mean, it's the year of Shohei Otani, first 50-50 season in MLB history, so it almost feels right to finish that off with a ring for him. Yeah, like Quinn said, we both got the Dodgers winning, but Otani has just been red hot this whole season. I'm not the biggest baseball guy in the world, so I apologize if our details aren't as intense or like in depth. But I honestly, hot take, I think Judge will not perform up to expectation during the finals. I feel like, honestly, he might sell for the Yankees. Uh, I think regardless of who comes out on top, the real winner is the MLB. You know, you have two of the largest markets going head to head, so I'm sure the MLB will make bank on this one. It'll be a series we can look back on for yeah. a long time. And I feel like it's great for the media too, because you have the superstar and Aaron Judge, like we just mentioned, yep. Shohei, like you mentioned, just going at it, like fans, not even from the US, are gonna t t uh, tune into this game with Otani being from Japan, right? Yeah, exactly. So the only reason I would like the Yankees to win is because of former pirate Garrett Cole, one of my favorite players growing up. So it would be nice to see him win yep. just because he was a former pirate. But besides that, I'm going with the LA Dodgers. But I like it. Anything else you got? Dodgers and six, let's go. Dodgers and six, and we'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. See, Smokey thinks I'm funny. Welcome back everyone to Inscribed Sports here on WSRU TV. It is time for our National Hockey League segment of the episode. Since the last episode, the New Jersey Devils remain the top team in the Eastern Conference by improving their record of to five, two, and one. In the Western Conference, the Winnipeg Jets have taken the first place spot. The Calgary Flames, which were the previous leaders in the last episode, have now moved down to third. 
the captain of the Pittsburgh Penguins, recently just passed 1,600 career points. See the kid achieve this incredible milestone last week against Buffalo when he scored one goal and two assists. That game did take place on October 16th. Also, Crosby's teammate Evgeny Malkin also had a big milestone the same exact night. Malkin hit his 500th goal of his career. And then Nikita Kucherov takes first place in the players with the most goals with seven currently. The point leader is now Artemi Panarin, followed by last week's leader Sam Reinhardt and Cal McCarr with 12. Goalie Jake Allen is now leading in two categories in goals against average with .50 and a .974 save percentage. Following the short break, we will be back with our UFC 308 segment. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. It is time for our next segment here on Instagram Sports. Dante and I will be giving our predictions and opinions on the upcoming UFC 308 card in Abu Dhabi. So the first fight is Sheriputin Magomedov versus Amon Petrosin. And it is a middleweight bout, but for this one, I'm gonna go with um, Magomedov. He's 14-0 with his record. I love his striking and he has some power and, having, and I have him by TKO in round two. And for the next one, is Leron Murphy versus Dan Ainge. It's a featherweight bout. I'm going to pick Dan Ainge here. I mean, he's coming off an impressive loss. And what I mean by impressive loss is his last fight, was only, he only came in on an hour notice and uh, no camp or no preparation. And he went the distance with um, now number three ranked Diego Lopez. So it was a very impressive fight. He could have won. But um, I think he gets it done by unanimous decision. And for the third fight is Magomedov Ankalaya versus Alexander Rakic. And Magomedov, I'm going to go with Ankalaev. He has some scary power. He has five TKO, or KOs, TKOs, and I feel like he picks up his six on the night. And I think he gets a stoppage in round three of a raw kick. And now it's time for the middleweight, the co-main event, and it's Robert Whitaker versus Kamzat Chemaev. Um, I'm going to, I think the fight can go either way. Uh, Whitaker has his, he has his great striking and his power, but if Kamzat makes it a like a wrestling or a grappling match, I think he takes it by uh, split decision. And then now it's time for the last fight on the night, and it's Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway, a featherweight championship main event. And I'm go I'm gonna go with Max Holloway. I mean, they're both coming off very impressive KO wins. Max Holloway being over uh, Justin Gagey, a very tough opponent, but it was, in my opinion, the knockout of the year. Very impressive. And Taporia is also coming off a KO win over one of the best featherweights of all time in Alexander Volkanovsky. But I just think Taporia, he can't outstrike Max Holloway. I don't think he can. I think Max Holloway is just going to take it over in the striking game. And I think he's going to cause problems for Taporia. And I think in the end, Max Holloway gets it done by, I'm going to say, KO slash TKO in the fifth and final round. What about you, Dante? How do you feel about the main event? Personally, even with Max Holloway at a plus 195, I've got him against uh, Taporier. I think he's faster, he's stronger, and maybe even mentally better. I think he's going to run up in there and just say, this is my fight. I mean, he did it against a Korean zombie. He did it against everybody else that he beat. Um, I think I, I'm, I got to go with Max Holloway here, even though he's plus 195, even though he's the underdog somehow. Yeah. And all right, we're going to go into commercial break, and we'll be right into the next segment. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, OK? Welcome back, everybody. It is finally time for our inscribed game of the week. And this week, I think the game of the week is going to be the Cowboys and the 49ers. And too bad the 49ers are banged up in this matchup because it just hurts them with Christian McCaffrey being out and then a lot of other injuries. But I got the Cowboys beating the Niners. I feel like the bye week prepared the Dallas Cowboys for winning this game after getting literally 
killed by the Detroit Lions, whatever the score was. I don't even remember. But it was just bad. And I feel like they're going to pass well with Dak Prescott, even though I'm not a firm Dak Prescott believer. But the Cowboys are second in passing yards this season so far. So I feel like the passing game for Dallas will win them this game. But, Quinn, who do you got, Cowboys or Niners? Yeah, unlike our World Series prediction, I'm going to have to disagree with you there, Joey. I'm going 49ers. Brock Purdy's coming off of one of the worst games of his career with three interceptions. So I think he's going to bounce back. Kyle Shanahan's a mastermind. And they might be banged up, but they still have a lot of weapons on that offense. And I think in a good NFC rivalry, the 49ers are going to come out on top this week. I also think, like, I don't think Brock Purdy's that good, honestly. That might be a hot take. I think he's just a system quarterback. But it's cool to see, like, I think it's a historic rivalry, too, at yeah. this point. Like, both teams have five rings, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So yep. it's going to be, although it's not for a Super Bowl and a six ring, but just the old school rivalry is definitely going to come out. We'll see some physical activity. We'll see some hits and maybe even a fight. Someone might get thrown out. We'll see what happens. But we're going to go to Dante and Hunter for their picks. For this game. I've got to agree with Quinn here even with the 49ers being so banged up and you know I don't think highly of Brock Purdy I have to go with the Niners first I don't like the Cowboys Dak is not good they don't have a running game and that defense was blown up against Detroit so I got to go Niners here I really don't want to but I also don't want to pick the Cowboys so I got to go Niners how about you I mean, first of all, I just wanted to admit that I was wrong last week. This dude was proving me wrong, so, hey, it's whatever. Of course you were, of course you were. Okay. But uh, I, this game, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'm not high on both teams at all, especially with the 49ers missing pretty much their whole offense. Uh, yeah, I'm not really high on Purdy. I'm not really high on Dak. But I think the defense might bounce back this week, seeing Purdy has no weapons. Uh I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go with the Cowboys. I mean, I, I just don't see Purdy, ex, like ex succeeding with this offense that he has right now with all of his pieces missing. And yeah, so I have to go with Cowboys this week. It's crazy that you're wrong twice. Yeah, it's crazy that you're in, talking. in an episode. Yeah, really. <laughs> in, an episode. in an episode. In your own one last week. Yeah, so. well, guess what? You're getting pied, buddy. <laughs> okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah, it's whatever. Thank you, everyone, for watching Inscribe Sports here on WSRU TV. That brings episode two to a close. We will see you again next week for episode number three. Have a great day, everyone, and take care.